Hi there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I'm back with another deck take and I'm here to talk about a minor miracle that has occurred from Wizards. The last few sets have seen commanders like these. They're in red and white and all they care about is equipment. So, I'm talking about things like Kellen the Fey Blooded from our last set, Wilds of Eldraine. Nahiri, Forged in Fury from the Aftermath set that came in March of the Machines. Jaw, Kadeen, First Gold Warden from Frexia All Will Be One. And it goes on. We can go even further in this. But Wizards have done this in this set and it's excited me. They have given us Anim Pakal, Thousandth Moon. A one red and white, one two legendary human soldier. Who really doesn't care about equipment. What they care about is you attacking with creatures, getting plus one plus one counters on themselves, and then creating us a whole load of gnome tokens that are tapped and attacking. Okay then, haven't got to worry about equipment in a red-white deck. Sorry. Now, somehow I missed this card when I was doing the early stuff with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. How I missed it, I do not know. But, oh wow we am I happy to see this. Something that I can actually do different in red and white. Hence why the first video this week is this one. So, here we go. This is what today's deck looks like. As usual, for one of my decks, we'll run through the land. It's all red-white. Uh, nothing really fancy here. We've got the Cliff Gate the and the Citadel Gate. You know, just get them in the wrong order, as I say, because, you know, alphabet, not strong point. Um, have included, you know, the th Thriving Bluff and the Thriving Heath to help as well. Um, the one card you can take out of the mana base is just replaced with a basic. Is Evid Mesa. If you own it, great. If you don't, oh well. Put another, put another planes in. Trust me, planes is where we're going with this deck. There's a lot of white in this deck. I fact wise, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, the Fire Diamond, and the Marble Diamond. The Medallions, because I count them both as ramp now, because they cut the cost down. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're a semi former ramp. And Talisman of Conviction, that's what we're going with. Now, with an Impical, what we want to try and do is obviously pump the toughness up. So, you want creatures that can attack early. Um, and also give us ways of ensuring that we have a little bit of plus one, plus one count of fun and games happening as we play the deck. So, here we go. There's a couple of things I'm trying out with this deck. Um, what I was actually hoping to do, and I'm going to be honest about it, was go down the whole Exalted deck. Um, so we kept our creatures alive. They made an Impecal bigger. I know it's not permanent plus one, plus one before you all showered me. Not that many red white exalted creatures, which surprised me. So this kind of still in here is a minor theme. And then I decided to look at it and went, well, it doesn't say it says you've got to attack with a non gnome creature to get the plus one. Now, you're only going to get one plus one plus one counter per turn, just so we're clear on this. We haven't got any way of doubling up. We're not in green. We haven't got access to our wonderful green things to let us double up the green counter, the plus one plus one counters. So bear that in mind. Um, and when so when you attack with a creature, you only get well one or more creatures. You're only going to get put a plus one plus one on, but it's still pretty good. If you put one on, you get a gnome that's taps and attacking. Next turn you attack again, you get two cannons, you get two gnomes, so on and so forth. So it doesn't take long to build up an army. Um, so bear that in mind as we're talking about the deck today, okay? So, let's go through it. We kept, like I said, we've still got some of the minor theme in here. So, um, Arkansian Squire still here. Gives us a reasonable creature that can attack. Cleric Class, we have a little bit of way of gaining life. And, you know, whenever we gain life, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature. So, more plus one, plus ones again over here. Um, I did play some of the gnomes, I'm going to be honest. I couldn't resist not having a few of them in here just to make the deck a bit more fun. Um, so market gnomes in here, which I quite like. It's a 0-3 that when it dies you gain a life and draw a card. So, you know, life gain, plus one, plus one counter. Does kind of mini combo-ish. Um, and if you can exile it from the battlefield while you're activating a craft ability, you can gain a life and draw a card as well. Fine, no issue with that. Goblin Champion comes in and attacks as a 1-2, which gets bigger if you've got more um, Exalted around. But, you know, it's a nice little attacker. It's okay, can cope with that. Elixir of Immortality is here, just to make sure we can, when everything does die, it can be shuffled back in and keep us going. 
Attentive Scribe's also one of the new gnomes I've decided to put in just so we get the scrying going. Um, yeah, makes sense. Get to have a scry when it becomes tapped. Fine by me. Clay Fired Bricks also comes in. This is one I do like. Um, you enter the battlefield, you get to search your life for a basic plane, reveal it, put it in your hand. Then shuffle and you gain two life. Hmm. Dropping this on turn three means you're going to hit your land drop, so keep it in mind. And then you can craft it eventually with one of your gnomes that you're going to create. And you get to flip it and it gives all your creatures a plus one, plus one. Now, obviously, Anim Pekatal really cares about counters, doesn't care about the plus one, plus one bump. But, you know, a little bit tougher, makes it harder to kill. Deep Gnome Terramancer, this one I do like. This also helps us get a Plains card from and put it into play. That's cool. We can do that a lot. Knight of Glory. There's an uptick in black decks at the moment, as you've probably seen if you've been playing a lot of Commander. And as well as having Exalted, the Pro Black I thought might help, hence why it's here. Some token production at instant speed. Raise the alarms here. The Paladin also here. First Strike Exalted. That's very hard blocker. Yeah, Make sure you, when you attack, you're still going to get your counters, so it's all good. Dragon Fodder. Sorcery speed blockers or in tokens if we need to attack and go wide. Invasion of Mercadia is also here. I quite like this. I think this is one of the underplayed battles coming through at the moment. And I quite like this because, you know, you can, it's quite easy to get the full damage taken care of, sorted out. Um, the discard and draw two is nice. And then you get the flip and you get a couple of... You get a way of discarding a card, creating some elemental tokens that then get plus one, plus zero, and everything gains haste. Yeah, that's quite a nice way of finishing off a game if you need to. Um, Krenko's Command, more Goblin Tokens. Ral's Reinforcement, Elemental Tokens. Ash Party Crasher, the only other recent red-white um, potential command. I think I did this on Pauper Deck ages ago. Um, that yeah, doesn't care about artifacts, so I figured it was fun having them in here. Been through all of these, but I will just point out we have got Lightning Grease, we have got the Boots. They are purely here to protect an um and the Thousandth Moon. Now, there's a couple of odd choices coming up, and I am going to give you options if you have got them. So, the first of these is the Bat Colony. Um, we have got some caves in here. There's The new caves are here somewhere. I know I put them in there. You're hidden volcano, hidden courtyard. Um, we've only put two in. It is possible you can take this out. Um... I'm not sure if we need it. I was looking down the cave route. And I'm going to be honest, while I'm doing the video, I am going to take it out now. And I am going to re instantly replace it with a Chroma's Will, just because I think it's a better card. So bear that in mind. Um, likewise, the Envoy of Oki Ahu. I hope I've said that right. I haven't offended anyone. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3, and then you get to pump some mana into it. Again, this is the other card I'm moving and ahhing over still, along with... Well, basically this, because we've still got Jessica's Will we haven't played in this deck. Probably should have the Will in here. This may be a card I'm going to try out and change. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to make this change now. Put the Will in over the Envoy now before we go any further. Halo Fountain's here, because I like Halo Fountain. Another way of giving us something. And if we can untap two tap creatures we control, we can draw a card. So, you know, you can untap your two gnomes and draw a card if you need to. Or if you're lucky enough to have 15 gnomes come into play, tapped and attacking, you win the game. With five white mana available. Anyway, um, Heliod, Sudden Crown, chuck around some lifelink, get some plus one, plus one counters. Okay, cope with that plan. Um, Master's Core gives us a couple of instant speed artifact creature tokens that we can make blockers with. Queen's Commission gives us vampires that give and give us a bit more lifelink, which is quite nice if we're, you know, cleric classy. So, yeah, works. Tinker's Tote, one of the new ones from our current set of Lost Caverns of Ixalan, um, comes into play, you get a couple of artifact gnome tokens, which is cool, and you can sack it to gain three life. Okay. And Kalia's Command. Now... <laughs> My gut feeling with this is you're going to ignore the first one because you don't really need another construct artifact creature token. But it is possible that the plus one plus one counter on Anakim can help if you're going to go for the attack. Getting a basic planes could happen, but more likely gain two life and scry two. Things going to be this one and this one we do the most. But there you go. Of course, because we are producing so many tokens, we had to have anointed procession in here. And you know, anointed procession in my decks always pairs up with smothering tithe. Yep, yeah, treasure tokens, always fun. Great. 
Inspiring Raw gives us a way of giving plus one, plus one counters on everything. Thank you. And Aramis Echo Ancient Shield. Um, yeah, I think people forgot about this one from Lord of the Rings. It's very nice. You get to when you cast your second spell each turn, which you can do with this deck. I mean, we've got a lot of one, twos, and threes. Um, you get to have a zero three wall, and that gives all your walls exalted, or all, all your creatures with defender exalted. So, quite a little bonus because there are some removal spells that people are starting to play that make your creatures have defender. So, keep it in mind. Silver Flame Ritual, plus one, plus one counters everywhere, and then Vigilance if you spend at least three white mana. Tithe, I've mentioned. Citadel Siege, you choose cards and chuck around plus one, plus one counters. Um, unless you really do need to keep something tapped down, so yeah, fair enough. Leonan War Leader, just another way of getting some tokens in play. Um, Moondrak, Glory Dominus, we're going to double up those tokens and then sacrifice some artifacts to make it indestructible, which is really nice in this deck. Sublime Archangel, let's give every single creature exalted. Um, this is really nice because then you just attack with this and it gets massive very hard and very dangerous to block. Especially, obviously, you know, a chrome as well. You see me put it in. You know what it does. Really going to play this when your commander's in play. Thousand Moon Smithy is a new one, again, from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It comes into play. You get a um, Gnome Construct. Let's go with that because it cares about artifacts and creatures. And at the beginning of your main phase, you may tap five untapped artifacts, pre-combat main phase. You may tap five untapped artifacts or creatures you control and transform it. Um, yeah. And then whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using mana produced by the barracks of the thousand, create a gnome construct. Makes perfect sense to me. Let's do it. Like it a lot. Right. Um... Big score gives a bit of card draw. Goblin Wizardry gives us goblins uh, instant speed who care about the spells we're casting for the prowess. Heroic Reinforcement, a couple of creatures, plus one, plus one, and haste for everything. And Invasion of Kylim comes into play. Up to two target creatures we control get plus two, plus zero, and vigilance and haste until the end of turn. And then when we get to flip, it flips the sorcery. Um, create a couple of 3-2 red and white warrior creature tokens with whenever this creature and at least one other creature token attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. They get big very quickly. Good fun cards. Neela, Sun's Vanguard is also here to make sure our attacking tokens have double strike, which is people forget about and gets quite nasty. And then whenever one or more tokens you control, attack a player, exile the top card of your library. You, and during any turn you attack with a token, you may play that card. Obviously, when you're doing this, attack each player who's left in commander to get that trigger. So you get three cards exiled and you can play them at any stage, as long as Nile are still in play. So yeah, bear that in mind. Outlaw's Merriment, because I just like this and it's fun. It's a bit like having Assembled of the Legion, another card I find fun and enjoyable in these sort of decks. Battle Grace Angel, it just means when we're doing the Exalted trick, we get a bit of lifelink action. Um, the best way ever printed at getting plus one, plus one counters that isn't in green. Cather's Crusade is a genius card. I love it. Um, cast some tokens. Just imagine, this. just bear with me. We'll live the pipe dream for a second. We've got an Impacal in play. We have Cather's Crus Crusade in play. We have four spare mana. We kiss, cast Raise the Alarm and Dragon Fodder. That gives us four triggers from our Crusade. We get four plus one plus one counters on here. That means that whenever we attack with one creature that turn, we're going to get four golems. Yes, I'm living the dream. I know that. Plus then, those golems then trigger Cather's Crusade. So those golems give us another four plus one plus one counters. And yeah, next turn, Anipixal's doing eight goblins? Go gnomes, sorry. Not goblins, gnomes. It's, yeah, it's silly. I know. Gotta live the dream. Hopefully I'll live the dream on stream when you see me playing this deck. Divine Visitation. We can turn the gnomes into um, angels if we need to. Yeah, I'll cover that. Um, Sunfall gives a bit of good ball control as well as a nice way to incubate things and get another token if we need it. Virtue of Loyalty from Wilds of Eldraine gives us a knight and then we get to chuck some plus one, plus one counters around in the end step. That's really cool. Um, An Otharia Sun's Glory. Now, we haven't got many rebels, um, 
So the chances of getting this back from the graveyard's difficult. Um, but if you attack and get a 2-2 rebel creature token that's tapped and attacking for each experience account you have, yeah, you might be able to do it. I mean, it's only one untapped rebel you control. Um, so hopefully, if the rebel survives and this dies, you get it back next turn. Go again with another experience counter. It's doable. Regina, the Redeemer, will gain some life and hopefully get warrior tokens. Gideon the Oath Sworn. Whenever you attack with two or more non Gideon creatures, per plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures. Nice way of building up tokens on here. People forget about Gideon Oathsworn. Um, can become its usual creature and then minus nine exile Gideon Oathsworn and each creature your opponents control. Nice little big board wipe, which means you will probably win the game the turn you do the minus nine. Sigarda Summons is also here. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them have base power and toughness four tour, have flying and are angels in addition to the other stuff. So... Plus one, plus one counters on one creature turns them into five fives with flying. Okay. And yeah, I'm making a lot of token creatures. OJ attack, deepest foundation, perfect kind of home. Um, we will be tripling up our tokens quite readily, I think, with this deck. But that's it. That is my take on Anim Pakal. I am just so, 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 so... Sorry, I just hit the thing up. Come on, display. Can we have you back? Thank you. Where have you gone? There you are. Um, I'm just so pleased that we have a red-white commander at last that doesn't care about equipment, so it's here, and I'm happy. Um, I'll be playing the deck on stream sometime this week, probably Thursday night when you see this. Depending when you see this, it'll be Thursday by the time I stream again. Um, so keep your eyes out for it. Hope you enjoyed the deck tech. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, I had a nice little bump the other week. It seems to have stagnated this week at 278. I'm still really hoping to get to the 500 by the end of the year. So please tell your friends. Please hit the little subscribe thing that's here. Um, if you haven't already, please. Just pretty please. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another deck take. Keep care. See yourself. Enjoy it. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.